I'm delighted to be here today to share with you an introduction to blockchain technology. Um, blockchain technology makes cryptocurrency and digital assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum possible. And you're going to have the opportunity to learn a lot more about cryptocurrencies in particular um, in the crypto track. Uh, but right here and right now, we're going to really talk about blockchain technology, what it can do, and what it can do for business and for good well beyond um, digital assets or cryptocurrencies. And so to start out, um, I want to share with you a story of the way that blockchain technology is actually being used today uh, in some of the least, what we might have thought of as the least technologically advanced places on the planet. And so today, um, in Jordan right now, there are hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees, almost a million. And the World Food Program has been successfully using blockchain technology to support feeding those refugees. Um, this is a picture of a woman in a refugee camp in, in Jordan, a Syrian woman, actually using this technology. And so what she does is she goes into a store, an aid depot, to get food, um, things like flour and sugar and salt and oil, the necessities of life. And instead of having to carry an ID card that could be stolen from her or taken away, she goes in and has her iris scanned. And that pulls up her identity. Now that part is not the blockchain part. The blockchain part is the fact that her iris scan pulls up not only her identity, but also the equivalent of a bank account, an aid account, so that she can go and get food and necessities and supplies from the store. And what blockchain technology does is it means that that account can be administered for less than 90% for 90 less than would be required to do the account with our traditional technology. And so what that means is the World Pro Food Program can feed more people and one dollar of donations goes further which is very powerful. And the program's been successful. It's being, um, the pilot was very successful. It's being rolled out to more and more refugee camps. And so I think one of the things to remember while we're here um, at the heart of Silicon Valley, learning how blockchain technology and all of these technologies are being used, it's sometimes outposts in the other reaches of the globe that are really putting these technologies into practice. Um, so before we dive into what the technology is and how it works, which is the focus of this talk, I wanted to take a moment to kind of address what is still the elephant in the room about, around blockchain technology. So I, I think folks have noticed that you know, last year, blockchain technology didn't make it to the front of the stage at the SU Global Summit. And I think um, the hype around Bitcoin was maybe at a fever pitch in December and January, and it's cooled a tiny bit. Um, but the reason that we're talking about blockchain technology here is not just because of digital assets, it's because of numbers like this. Um, so Gartner Research predicts that by 2030, over $3.1 trillion of business value will be generated from blockchain technology. And that's business value generated from blockchain technology that doesn't even include digital assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum and the others. Right? So this is what business could potentially achieve. And 12 years from now is not that long. And uh, part, I'm going to give you some examples of how businesses today are using this technology that will help you start to understand why and how that number could be generated. Um, so now let's get into kind of the meat of the presentation, which is how does blockchain technology work? And I'm going to do one more piece of level setting before we dive in, which is the following. So how many of you used an email today or in the last week, right, used an email. Pretty much everybody in the room. But how many of you really understand the TCP IP protocol and the underlying distributed mathematical systems that gets the ones and zeros of your email from one computer to another, right? Now, there's a couple, there's a couple raised hands. Come find me later. I'll be around this whole summit, and I'd love to get in deep with you. Um, but the reason I share this is because with blockchain technology, the goal of this presentation is to give you a conceptual understanding of how it works so that you can go in and apply it. If you were going to teach someone to use an email who had never sent an email before, you're not going to go into TCP IP protocol. You're going to give them the conceptual understanding of sending an email. And that's what we're going for here. So if you walk away um, with just one sense, you want to explain blockchain technology while standing on one foot, this is it. This is really the heart of the innovation. What blockchain technology lets us do is it lets us give digital ob objects a unique fingerprint. So when you have an individual object in the physical world, right? Like, you know, um, any kind of physical object, I can't just magically 3D printing aside conjure another one. 
But if we go back to that email, the ones and zeros of your email, it's very easy to make a copy. And once I have made a copy of those same ones and zeros, it's almost impossible to tell the difference, which was the original and which was the copy. So if you think about what blockchain technology lets us do at the heart, is it's a way that we can secure and share information that gives that information a unique fingerprint. To kind of go into it a little deeper, for those of you who've used Excel, right, Excel for managing spreadsheets, you know how hard it is to manage out a spreadsheet when you're working on it among a group and to keep track of the official copy, right? And in fact, keeping official copies of a wide series of transactions is really hard. And so that's why businesses like SAP make so much money doing that for people. Now, the technology of the internet means that we can actually share copies of transactions, copies of our information across multiple groups at the same time. Uh, and so basically what you're able to do is move from something like Excel to Google Sheets. And for those of you who haven't used Google Sheets, it means that you can kind of in real time work on a project with multiple people. Now, the challenge though, and the problem with Google Sheets is this. You can delete the edit history. And so what that means is if, if we're working in a group on a project on Google Sheets and maybe I haven't contributed that much to the project, if I go ahead and delete the edit history, good luck proving to the teachers that I didn't contribute to the project, right? And deleting the edit history can be funny in that kind of situation, but in situations where it's really important to know who touched which money or the full, trend, the full record of a supply chain object as it moves through the supply chain, it's a lot scarier to delete the edit history. And the fact that it's so easy to delete the edit history not just for Google Sheets, but for whenever you, you use information on our normal internet. Um, that has prevented us from bringing certain kinds of fields of business online. And so I'm about to share, I'm gonna shortly share with you some examples of again, how businesses are using this technology today to automate and bring online parts of the economy that up until now have had to be on paper. So, um, before we move forward, I'm gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive into the technology and how it works. So with blockchain technology, instead of having one central copy at the front of the room, we have peer-to-peer -peer distributed information. So what that would mean is that every single one of you would actually have a copy of all of the transactions. Uh, but then we have a challenge, right? If each of you have a copy of the transactions, what happens when there's a new transaction? How does the network achieve consensus? And what that means is, how do we update all of our copies at the same time and in the same way securely so that we can trust the update? And that problem is a really hard problem. This problem of how do you achieve consensus is a problem that was actually only solved first in 2009 with the development of Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin network was the first example of a blockchain network. Here I'm telling you cryptography is used to update the network. Why am I saying cryptography? Well, the, the technology around updating a network for a blockchain technology, so you update the network in the same way and the same time across nodes, that technology is actually evolving extremely rapidly. And so for those of you who've heard that the Bitcoin network is slow, that the Bitcoin network uses a lot of energy, well, guess what? It uses an old kind of cryptography to update the network. Um, for those of you who get a chance to hear the alumni session, I'll be going into some details of the kind of cryptography that updates the network. But remember, we're going for that conceptual understanding here. So once you have your network updated using your cryptography, which again is evolving rapidly, um, each node will add a new block of transactions to the blockchain. And so what that means is each one of you would add that new transaction to your copy. And each of the blocks are cryptographically connected. And so what that means is that let's say, you know, and no technology is perfect, blockchain technology is not perfect. Let's say you want to go ahead and delete the edit history. What if you wanted to make a change that no one could see on the blockchain network? You don't want people to see that you made the change. You don't want them to see when you made the change because the default is they're gonna see that the change was made, when it was made, and the key of who made it, right? So the blocks, they're cryptographically connected. So if you wanna make the change and you want it to be undetectable, you have to make a change not just on one block, 
you have to do it on over 50% of the, of the, the nodes, over 50% of the copies. And you have to do that at the same time, or people will notice that you're tampering with the network, right? But you don't make it just on one block. You actually have to make that change on every single block in the whole history of the blockchain because the blocks are cryptographically connected. And so we go from a world where if you can sneak in th past the moat and make a change on a centrally held copy, you've just made that change undetected, to now you have to make the change on over 50% of the copies. And you have to do it not just on one cell in the spreadsheet, you have to do it on every single cell in the whole, in the whole spreadsheet at the same time in the same way. It's very hard to do. It's not impossible. With a powerful enough computer, you could do it. It's very, very hard. It's orders of magnitude harder than anything else out there. So before we, we dive into the examples, which I think will help to wrap our heads around this technology, because it is an abstract set of advances, um, I want to share with you what smart contracts are. Uh, because smart contracts actually play a key role in how businesses will use this technology. So I have good news for you, which is that every single one of you has used a smart contract. If you've gone online, and you've signed up for an automatic bill payment, or you've signed up for a yearly subscription that will renew, well, congratulations, you've used a smart contract. All a smart contract is is a piece of executable code that takes place without additional human intervention. But when you combine smart contracts with these powerful, flexible digital databases that capture information in a much more secure way, all of a sudden we can have a revolution in how we share and store information. Because those smart contracts can be tied to new transactions taking place in our blockchain network. Let me share with you a bit of what that means. Um, so one of the most exciting ways that blockchain technology is being used today is by Maersk and IBM with a new joint venture. In January, Maersk and IBM, they announced a new joint venture that is as I speak right this moment, every day capturing up to a million or more transactions on our global supply chain, different pieces of information. Where is the ship? What's on that ship? And this, this um, joint venture that Maersk and IBM launched, um, they have had over 94 partners sign up already, right? It's very, very powerful what they're doing here. And it started last July, just a year ago. What happened a year ago? Well. Maersk and IBM announced not a joint venture, but a new pilot project where they were finding ways just for Maersk's own use to use blockchain technology to take international shipping into the 21st century. Because with international shipping, up to 20% of the costs, the World Economic Forum estimates, come due to administrative and documentation costs. So Maersk and IBM thought they could save just Maersk $38 billion by moving Maersk shipping containers and, and the documentation administrative costs around that onto a blockchain-based system. Because what they were able to do is instead of the, the world today, um, you actually have physical papers that need to be stamped as you move from port to port. And those papers need to be inspected by inspectors who, who, who put their stamp on the paper. And it's, a, it's interesting, but the, the pilot that Maersk and IBM did we're moving avocados from Mombasa in Kenya to Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And part of why they use that example is because if you take too long to get your avocados to Rotterdam, they're going to spoil. And so the costs of not doing the documentation fast are very high. And so what they did, and, and not only that, but when you're in Kenya and you're trying to get the right documents stamped, sometimes couriers and motorbikes will move the documents from place to place. And so what Maersk had to do along the way was pay small regional shipping companies large amounts of money to help make this process smooth. And meanwhile, Maersk, the company with the assets, was in the red or dealing with very, very thin margins. Those regional shippers were making 15 to 20 percent margins. And so they've been putting a tremendous amount of effort and dollars behind this effort. Um, but what's happened is that it's been successful enough in just a year, from last July to now, that it's being rolled out around the globe. There's participation from ports of authority all over the planet. And there's some pretty incredible numbers. If, if this system really gets underway and used, the World Economic Forum predicts that in Asia, there will be $257 billion of additional exports generated. 
right? I mean, it's incredible numbers that come from here. And that's part of how I think we can get to a number like $3.1 trillion by 2030, even if right now we're in the tens of billions, right? And because, as Pascal said, we're in this exponential curve, it's important to pay attention to this now. So one other example for you folks. Um, how many people here have ever bought real estate or ever engaged in any kind of real estate transaction? So even here in the US, when you buy a house, you need something called title insurance. Because you think that you bought that house and the seller thinks that they've sold it. But if the deed, if your property ownership ends up being challenged, well, you need insurance. And in, in Latin America, in rural Latin America, up to 70% of property is not secure. And that means that if you're in rural Latin America with a farm, you can't collateralize that farm for a loan. Because if the wrong person goes into office, well, they have control over the courthouse, and you might think you own that farm, but they might tell you it belongs to their friend, right? So this is a huge problem around the world. How do we know which contracts were signed? How do you really know that you own that property? And so what Propy Inc. is doing, is doing, excuse me, Propy Inc. is a startup, and they are working on putting into a blockchain-based system using smart contracts every aspect of the purchase of real estate. So that's everything from the deed for title insurance, escrow. Imagine if instead of having to pay an escrow agent a fee, you and a buyer could have encoded in a smart contract, if X, Y, Z events take place, well, the funds will automatically go to the seller, right? That's what Propy Inc. is developing. And so for those of you who've actually participated in real estate transactions, you can start to understand all of the different complicated pieces, the middlemen, the lawyers, all the different places where maybe if we had technology to automate and make more smooth the process of that transaction, it could go faster, it could go better, and it could end up with more money in the hands of both buyer and seller because the seller would actually get more for a lower price. And so think not just about Propy and real estate, but think about any set of transactions in any business, whether it's commodities, oil futures, um, music rights, movie rights, um, thinking about resolving transactions in the financial services industry, those are all opportunities to start thinking about applying blockchain technology. And so for each of you here in the room, you're thinking, you're starting to think exponentially you're here because you want to know, how is this technology going to affect me? How will it affect my business? And I challenge each of you to think of some way that you might start to apply this technology. Technology where you have far more secure and reliable ways of putting information online um, in ways that, again, to this day have never before been possible because the folks at Maersk, they're smart and they invested hundreds of millions of dollars into their system. It's not like they were waiting to do that with the internet that we had before. It's just, if you're shipping avocados, but what arrives in Rotterdam is white powder, you've got to have an audit trail. You've got to be able to investigate what went wrong where. And so places where we're still using paper, those are incredible opportunities to think about applying this technology. And, and with that, I hope that you're all excited to learn more. Um, my email's here. You're welcome to email me if you have questions about blockchain technology um, or questions about how you might apply blockchain technology. And uh, it's just truly a pleasure to be here with you. I'm wishing you a wonderful three days. Thank you.